Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the differences between the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 versus the Tab S7 Plus. I don't have the smaller 11 inch Tab S7 so I won't be able to show you that side by side with the previous model. But the 11 inch it's uh, pretty similar in size to the Tab S6 just that it's slightly larger and slightly thicker. But the difference in size is pretty much what you see here right now. The design with the new tablet and the previous tablet very similar, thin bezels throughout rounded corners, build quality is excellent. On the back there are two cameras, uh, same here, and the uh, pen charging it's still around this area here. For Tab S7 the pen tip has to point to the camera but for the Tab S6 the pen tip points down. And for the camera here, there is the additional flash. The charging is for the battery, um, which is for the wireless gestures that you can use with the S Pen that's included with the tablet. But you don't actually need to use the battery in order to draw or to write. Resolution for the S6 and the S7, it's 2560 by 1600. Aspect ratio is 16 by 10. For the S7 Plus, it's 2800 by 1752. Aspect ratio is also 16 by 10. In terms of pixel density, both displays, they are very sharp. I am not able to see any pixelation when using the tablets from normal distance. Both tablets are very thin, just 5.7 millimeter for the Tab S7, which I'm going to refer to in this video as the LCD model. Uh, that's 6.3 millimeter thicker compared to the S6. In terms of battery life, um, you can get maybe seven, eight, nine hours with this. But for the S7 Plus, that's around seven hours. So even though the larger tablet has significantly larger battery capacity, um, battery life is actually lower due to the 120 hertz refresh rate, which is really satisfying to use, but it does affect battery life quite significantly. Having said that, seven hours of use on this tablet is quite good. If you actually drop down the refresh rate to 60 hertz, uh, which matches this, um, you can get an extra one to two hours. The smaller Tab S7 also has 120 hertz refresh rate, so I expect the battery life to be similar to the Plus model. Now, uh, Super AMOLED display, the colors, they do look really vibrant. Compared to LCD, you will notice the difference. So let me just open up a file to show you guys. Here's a quick sketch that I drew in Medibank Paint Pro and notice the colors, they are quite similar. Now with the AMOLED display, you are actually able to choose the screen mode and set it to natural, which mimics LCD. So let me show you the difference now. I'm not sure if the camera can capture the visual differences, uh, but the cyan, magenta, and yellow they look slightly more muted here with the natural screen mode. On the vibrant screen mode, it's still um, the colors are still very vibrant. And if I were to transfer this file to my computer and view it on my desktop monitor, which is also LCD, the colors here will look the same. But if I compare the Super AMOLED with my LCD monitor, the colors will look off. So if you are going to draw or edit photos on the tablet from start to end and you're not going to view your work on any LCD monitor, then you will not get the oh, why are my colors different moment. Now these two AMOLED displays, um, they still have um, pulse wave modulation issues. Currently, I am recording this video at 60 frames per second. Let me switch to a higher frame rate to show you the PWM flicker more obviously. And now it's recording at 160 frames per second. I am not able to see the PWM in the real world, but some people, they may be affected by the PWM flicker. It's more obvious on the Tab S6, slightly better on the Tab S7 Plus, but it's still there. 
And now I'm back at recording with a shutter speed of 60 frames per second. So the camera should not show or capture any PWM. Now with the 11 inch Tab S7, it uses IPS LCD panel. Um, there's not going to be any PWM flicker because it doesn't use PWM for the backlight. Back to the vibrant screen mode. Now I notice um, the white on the Tab S6, it has that slight blue tint to it. I'm not sure if it's there on the first day uh, or it developed over time. But anyway, Samsung, they do allow you to adjust the uh, colors like the RGB. So you can probably adjust it until it matches the white here, which looks more white to me. So here you can see the blue tint more obviously. I have been using this tablet for a year and I did not notice any AMOLED burn in or screen burn in, although you can definitely find people complaining about AMOLED burn in issues online. But for me, um, the display seems to be holding up quite well. And now let's test the latency. So for the new S Pen that's included with Tab S7 and S7 Plus, it has improved latency of 9 milliseconds. Uh, I'm not sure about the latency for the older pen. Anyway, um, combined with the 120 hertz refresh rate, you are going to be able to notice more responsiveness when it comes to writing and drawing. So let me just uh, record this section at a higher uh, FPS and then reduce it to let you see the difference. Just pay attention to the gap between the pen tip and the line as it appears as it tries to catch up with the pen tip. The app that I'm using is Wacom Bamboo Paper and there is still latency. I mean, there is still a gap between the pen tip and the line as it tries to catch up, but the animation of the line as it appears on the display, it's smoother on the Tab S7 Plus. With Samsung Notes, the latency is much better, noticeably better compared to Wacom Bamboo Paper. So the gap between the pen tip and the line, it's very minimal. And together with the 120 hertz refresh rate, um, the writing experience is really good. On the Tab S6, the gap is also smaller, but when the line appears, it appears bit by bit not as fluid compared to on the Tab S7 Plus. This is the Tab S6. The difference between the latency is quite subtle and it's more obvious when you are drawing long sweeping lines. And this is the Tab S7. I can definitely see it's more responsive here but um, the note-taking experience is still very good with the Tab S6. Both S Pens, they are very accurate. The cursor always tracks directly beneath the pen tip and even when writing near the edges, um, the tracking is very accurate. Both displays are still laminated, so there is almost no gap between the glass and the display beneath. The physical design of the new S Pen is also better. Here you can see it has a more tapered end here versus this Tab S6 Pen. Uh, so when writing at certain positions, sometimes that uh, S6 Pen, it can block the pen tip. But for the Tab S7 Pen, you will always be able to see the pen tip. Now the pen tip, uh, for both pens, they are still the rubberized type of tips. If you wear them down, you can replace them uh, very easily because they are very easy to find and very affordable. If you are thinking of upgrading from the Tab S6 to the S7 or S7 Plus for the 120Hz display and the 9ms S Pen, I'm not sure if it's actually worth the money uh, because the other specifications they are really very similar. So both tablets, they have uh, six gigs to eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, all the way up to 512 gigs. They both still have the micro SD card slot. And the processor inside um, with the older tablet is Snapdragon 855. 
on the Tab S7 is Snapdragon 865 Plus. In terms of like overall performance, uh, opening web pages, playing videos, the visual difference or responsiveness is not going to be that different. When it comes to playing games that are able to take advantage of the 120 hertz refresh rate, you are going to notice smoother animation and it's really enjoyable to be playing on such a big display at 120 hertz all right to conclude the noticeable differences between the tab s6 versus the 11 inch tab s7 that would be the amulet versus the lcd display 60 versus 120 hertz and the pen latency for tab s6 versus tab s7 plus it would be the difference in screen size 12.4 inch versus 10.5 and the pen latency and also the 120 hertz refresh rate versus 60 hertz if you already have the tab s6 i'm not sure if um, it's worthwhile to upgrade to the tab s7 just for the 120 hertz but if you want a larger display a 12.4 maybe it's more worthwhile if you are getting a tablet for the first time or you are upgrading from a much older tablet, I do recommend the Tab S7 and S7 Plus because this year they have good specifications and they have really good improvement. And when you compare this to the iPad Pro 11 and 12.9 inch, I do feel they provide more value for your money. I mean, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, it starts at US $999 for the 128 gig storage model. And that doesn't include the Apple Pencil 2, which is US $129. For the Tab S7 Plus, it starts at US $849 and it includes the S Pen. So in terms of value for money, I do feel you get more of that with the Samsung tablet. Both tablets have Samsung DeX, which is the desktop interface for the Android system. One good thing I like about Samsung DeX is you can connect this to an external monitor using the USB-C cable. So this year, Samsung has put out a really good tablet. It is expensive, but you get what you pay for. The downsides for me would be the battery life when running the display at 120 hertz. You get seven hours of battery life, which is decent. It's reasonable, uh, but I wish it could be better. Another downside, which uh, personally doesn't affect me, is the PWM, the flicker, which uh, some people can spot it can be sensitive to certain people but i personally don't uh, notice that it doesn't affect me so those are the two downsides but overall this is a good purchase and a tablet i can recommend very easily for those who have the budget all right if you guys have any questions let me know in the comment section below see you in the next video bye